Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Clark, and I serve as Vice President for the Kentucky Council of Exceptional Children. I've been a member of CEC for most of my career, and I've served on the executive board for the past four years. I joined CEC because I wanted to learn more strategies to support students with moderate to severe disabilities, like my son, Dan, who has autism and epilepsy. I'm a special education consultant at the Northern Kentucky Cooperative for Educational Services, and I have 20 years experience in special education. I'm excited to share some healthy teaching habits and dispositions with you. So let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about some strategies and healthy habits you can use to set yourself up for success. Our road begins with how we can make lasting change. Our focus today is on ways we can build healthy habits for a lifetime of fantastic teaching. In our journey, we wanna make sure that we don't lose our students um, as we move through this journey called teaching, just like we often say, we don't want to miss the forest for the trees. The big ideas in the training today come from Elena Aguilera's fantastic book, Onward. She has a website called Cultivating Emotional Resilience that has excellent downloadable tools. And if you get a chance to check out Onward, I would highly recommend it. We're going to take just a snapshot of some of the big ideas that stood out to me. In the next few minutes, I'm going to be sharing with you 15 tips that we can use as a roadmap to change where we can build those healthy habits to begin a beautiful teaching practice. All of our journey begins with a single step, uh, not a, a leap across a continent. So let's take that first step together. The first suggestion I have for you is to start with the end in mind. Paint a mental picture of where you want to be as a human and as an educator. Where do you want your students to be right now? The sky is the limit. Where would you like them to go and be and learn by the end of the academic year? To help us make progress forward, we often have to plan backwards. What do you need to do or learn to accomplish your goals? Instead of trying to make giant steps forward or accomplish days and decades worth of work, make little tweaks to the habits and the teaching practices that you already have in place now at this point in the year. Take a minute to fire up those happy and healthy emotions. Find one area in your teaching practice that you feel passionate about, whether it's teaching your students a new literacy strategy or finding a new intervention to help that one student with a behavior that's causing him or her a challenge. It's crucial as a new teacher that you monitor your mindset um, and put a lid on those unhealthy emotions and mindsets that will keep you stuck in the mud, but rather keep that forward healthy growth mindset going that says, I don't know the answer yet. I don't have the solution yet, but I'll get there. Activate your autonomy, your ability to dive in and learn new content, new resources, to independently search for new ideas that you can use to support your teaching practice. Identify those key choice points in your growth plan for where you'd like to be tomorrow and at the end of the year and look for those places where you can make those little tweaks and those easy changes for growth. Building a routine um, can make a huge difference in your growth. Think about um, ways that you can have a healthy start to your day, your week, your month, your quarter, and then stick to that routine as much as possible. Often we can pair happy experiences together 
with an activity that we need to do, like having a great cup of coffee uh, with my morning to-do list to make sure that I'm on track for the day. Building that routine will help ensure that you get everything accomplished in the day, the week, the month, and the semester that you need. I always ended my week by pulling together all of the progress monitoring forms, handouts, and materials that I needed so that I knew leaving the building on Friday afternoon that I could come in Monday ready to hit the ground running and begin instruction. And that routine served me well. I had to do a lot of planning backwards so that each day I was doing a small piece Um, Like on Tuesdays, I would start my lesson plans and focus on reading. On Wednesday, I focused on my math lesson plans for the upcoming week. On Thursdays, I typically ran my copies during my plan period. And on Fridays, I made sure that all of my progress monitoring tools were ready. Having those smaller pieces broken down really helped me feel like by Friday, I didn't have a mountain to accomplish, but rather just two or three more items I needed to finish up. Make your routine as easy as possible. I started with a really complex calendar system and found that it was just too much work. I ended up um, turning into a to-do list for the day, the week, and the month that I could easily um, write and uh, mark things off as I went. For those reoccurring tasks that I had, I made calendar invites, but those smaller tasks, I made a quick to-do list. So whatever's easier for you, make your systems easy, not so complex that it has 5 million steps and you'll never get them all done. Piggyback your behaviors so that you um, pair something that might not be a favorite task with a preferred task. So for example, um, writing out my lesson plans was not always my favorite activity, but looking at my students' uh, progress data was. I really like to see how they grew over the week. So I paired those together. Um, Look at my student data and then work on my lesson plans for that subject area. I also tried to piggyback uh, my behaviors with the amount of time I had. So if I only had a half an hour, I knew that that would let me analyze data. If I had an hour to an hour and a half, it would let me analyze data and um, create a lesson plan. So piggybacking things close together really helped me be successful. I also tried to piggyback behaviors by, um, if I was learning something new, (laughs) piggybacking that with doing something I felt really accomplished at, that kind of kept my forward momentum going and didn't let me get stuck in the mud by feeling overwhelmed trying to do a new task that I didn't yet feel accomplished at. Every morning I made a pre-commitment to myself This day will be fantastic. My students will grow and learn, and I will be able to help someone. Making that pre-commitment to myself every day helped me focus on those positive attributes of the day that I wanted to be sure were going to happen, as opposed to, oh no, here we go again. It's Thursday, and -and so-and-so's behavior is always out of control. I tried to start with a positive focus, and make that my highlight, my mantra for the day, and repeat that to myself at the end. I made a difference in someone's life. I worked to make it great. I might have made a mistake or two, but tomorrow will be even better. Gather your people, and by gathering your people, I mean find those people that will positively affirm and support you and work together with them to affirm and support them. Make your village tight and make sure that your people are all headed in the same direction you are. It's really easy to get caught up in a cycle of negativity and complaining if the people around you are all engaged in that same behavior. So you want to find those cheerleaders, those happy people, those people that focus on positive instruction to make a difference for our students and make sure that those are your crew. Stop thinking and act is one of my favorite expressions. It's really easy to get caught up in your own head and ideas 
and it's important to move forward. We might not always have the perfect answer, but we can pull an evidence-based strategy that we um, know has worked for other students across history, across time, and, and use that for our student. So rather than um, planning so long that you don't actually get any work done, um, focus on those small accomplishable tasks that you can engage in and begin. Don't forget to take time to reward yourself. I make uh, a list for myself that has lots of smaller steps so that I can stop and celebrate my accomplishments. Um, it doesn't always have to be a sweet treat, although those are my favorite. Um, it can just be that small feeling of, yes, I did it. It might sound silly, but I really like giving myself stars. So as I mark things off of my list, I get two or three things checked off, I'll make a star on my paper. And something about seeing that star is affirming and makes me feel like I've accomplished something great. So whatever your star is, whatever your reward system is, make sure to take time to acknowledge, even if it's just a verbal affirmation in your head. Yeah, I did it. It's working well. And here's what I can do better tomorrow. Be sure to take time to soak in the satisfaction of interventions planned, of IEPs written, of lesson plans developed. Even if you take just 30 seconds a day to pause and reflect on the positive things that happened in your world, it can make a significant difference to your mental health. Don't forget to think about those next steps that you can start. Um, for example, if you are working with a student with significant behavior and you've got some interventions that are working, but you're not sure they're exactly the right fit, my next steps are often to begin talking to colleagues and looking for other evidence-based interventions I can use. I hope that you enjoyed this quick dive into some tips we can use to support our positive teaching and that you will dive into the next video to look at some healthy habits and dispositions with me.